good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Keswick. This is your first time in Keswick. Welcome to Keswick. We are exercising our right, our God-given right, a free speech today in Keswick. You are free to speak in public. I am free to speak in public, and we are free to disagree, folks. So if you have any feedback for me, I would greatly appreciate it while we are uh, hearing the word of God. If you disagree with anything I say, please speak up. Use your God-given free speech. We are free to disagree. And my reference point, my reference point for anything I say today is this. The word of God. The only God who exists, the God of the Bible. There's no other God formed before him. There's no other God after him. The God of the Bible is the only God who exists and he has given us his precious word. He's given us his word that's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, so that we don't walk in dark, darkness, in ignorance, friends. The last thing we want to be in life is ignorant about the truth of God. And the, the Bible says that the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. It makes a bold claim that you can know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So please read your Bibles. If you want a Bible, we'll give you a free Bible. You can read the word of God yourself and come to a knowledge of the truth. Switch off Netflix. Put down Candy Crush. Switch off the computer and read the word of God, friends, and you can come to a knowledge of the truth. The truth about where life began. The age-old question of how everything began. The Bible tells us, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, a big bang from out. In the beginning, God. The God of the Bible. There is no other God except the God of the Bible. He's the only God who exists. He created everything. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The God of the Bible spoke everything into existence. Your life isn't an accident, friend. You're not here by some random fluke. You're not here by some random act, a cosmic explosion, a big bang from nought that insults our intelligence. And that's the best. That's the best that so-called experts can come up with. The greatest minds that the world has, all they can come up with when they discount God, who created everything in six literal days, six 24-hour periods, he created everything in six days and rested on the seventh, didn't he? That's what the Bible says. And when you reject that, when you, when you reject the word of God, anything you come up with is going to be a lie, isn't it? It's going to be insane. It's either insanity or God. The God of the Bible made the stars, the Bible says. He made the stars, he spoke everything into existence. He made the stars, he knows them all by name, he knows their number. The God of the Bible has infinite power, infinite knowledge, he's always known everything about everything. What a wonderful God he is. And my desire for you today is to come to know him. Is to live your life, not for the things of the world, because if you love the world and the things in the world, you don't have the love of God. What are you living for, my friends? What has your attraction in life? Is it some immoral relationship that you're clinging to? What has your attraction? Where is your attraction in life, friends? Is it the stuff in life, the comforts in life? Is it money? You know, the love of money, not money itself, but the love of money is the root of all evil, the Bible says. Is that where your attraction is in your finances? You see, this world is in a very strange predicament at this moment in time. We're, we're frightened to death by the, the media, aren't we? The mainstream media are always terrifying us about something. Three years ago it was COVID. And now we've got a climate emergency that's non-existent as well. And if you're daft enough, they'll terrify you so you're hiding behind your sofa again. But 
you don't have to be afraid, my friends. The God of the Bible is in control of everything. The creation that he created, he didn't walk away and leave it to exist to man's free will. He didn't walk away and leave it to exist and just hope for the best. The God of the Bible has a decree, a purpose. He created everything with a purpose in mind. And everything works out perfectly. There's no random acts in creation. There's no such thing as luck, either good luck or bad luck. God is sovereign. Isn't that reassuring? That everything has a purpose. Every single thing that happens has a purpose. One wise preacher said, there's not a raindrop falls from that sky that doesn't hit its intended target. God even has a purpose for a little raindrop falling from the sky and he, it does exactly what he sen sends it to do. That's how powerful the God is, the God of the Bible is. He's sovereign. He's in control of everything, and I mean everything. The psalmist, the psalmist says, you know a word on my lips before I even speak it, you know my thoughts. God knows our thoughts. He knows us better than we know ourselves, friends. He knows us better than we know ourselves. That's, that's frightening. That's why the Bible says it's a terrifying thing to stand before God, the only God who exists. You're not going to stand before any other God other than the God of the Bible after death. You see, it's appointed for us to die once. Friends, don't cling to your sin. Your sin will take you to a devil's hell. Flee the wrath to come, friends. It's coming soon. The axe is laid at the root of the tree. The judge is at the door. And nobody goes to heaven clinging to their sin. Nobody. And you know the wonderful, a wonderful truth that occurred to me uh, recently? I'd like to share it with you. If, you have, if you're writing notes today, please do. Please write this down. Jot this down. This will help you in life. Nobody goes to heaven. Nobody goes to heaven. And heaven is already filled with an innumerable multitude of people, isn't it? From every nation, tribe, and tongue. But heaven, nobody goes to heaven to that place where it's perfect, where there's no more sorrow, tears, no more depression, no more mental issues, no more suffering, no more sin. A perfect world. Nobody goes there for anything that they've done. And I mean anything. You see, because what mankind tried to do is they tried to make up for the bad things they've done. We've all got guilty consciences, right? We know it's wrong to lie and steal. We know it's wrong to commit adultery. We know it's wrong to harbor hatred in our heart for our fellow image bearers of God. We know it's wrong to dishonor our dad and mom, don't we? Uh, we've got a God-given conscience. God has given you a conscience so you know right from wrong. And humanity, in their attempts to silence their guilty conscience, they'll maybe join some religion and fast and pray five times a day and visit a holy site like Lewis or Mecca or maybe confess their sins to another man, to a Roman Catholic priest, in an attempt to alleviate their conscience, to make up for the bad things they've done. And we've all done bad things. We've all done sneaky, nasty things to other people, haven't we? We've all done selfish things. We're all sinners. That's the point. Just like the Bible says, all have sinned. That's the whole human race. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's standard, haven't we? We've all fallen short of his glory. And so what religion does, what dead religion does, I should say, what dead religion does is it tells you that if you do something that can make up for the bad things that you've done, you know, you're like, you're balancing the scales somehow. But there's a huge problem with that, friends. The God of the Bible doesn't accept anything from you as payment for your sin. Nobody goes to heaven for anything that they've done. You see, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It doesn't matter how many times you fast and pray. It doesn't matter how religious you profess to be. It doesn't matter how nice you are. It doesn't matter how much money you give to charity. You can give every penny that you possess away to some charitable organization. You can do all that. Leave yourself poor and penniless, friends. You can do that. But your sin remains. The God of the Bible doesn't accept anything from us, any effort on our part, as payment for our sin. Without the shedding of blood, 
there is no forgiveness. God requires a blood sacrifice for sin. And if you have no blood sacrifice for your sin, if you're trusting your own efforts, your own niceness, your own works, you're still dead in your sin. You're still an enemy of God. You see, there are no good people on planet Earth. Not one. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. Every single one of us. That's one thing you and I have in common. We're sinners in the sight of a holy God. And until we see ourselves in reality, in truth, until we see ourselves, God bless you, my friends. Repent and believe the gospel, friends. Don't die in your sin. Don't die in your sin. Don't die and go to a devil's hell. Hello, my friend. Hello, brother. <laughs> Good to see you. Ministries. Oh, you're still here again, then. <laughs> Bad pennies, we keep turning. Oh, yeah, same, yeah, same as me. <laughs> They're probably the worst. Uh, so I was, I was things here. Yeah. Getting yeah. Not many, many, uh, well, convert. the thing is, you now all the actions down on that end of town. Better quality clientele, do you? Wow. We've had some really, really good conversations. Oh, good. That's good. what we got. Oh, great, sir. That's how it nicely. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it, it's there, isn't it? It's, it's written. What more can you say? Yeah. It's written. <laughs> they need to know the answer. Yeah. Uh, well, do any of them stop on this part of the I've just really started preaching. Uh, we've had oh, some okay. a good morning so far with the uh, tracks, random tracks out. Uh, that's getting rid of a lot. And yeah. Some good conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's going well so far, so we'll see how it goes. What's your name? Dale. Dale? Yeah. Sorry, what's, Dale. What's yours? Mal. Malvin. Malvin. It's a Welsh it's a well name, Melvin. Oh, is it? Manor oh, Melvin. Oh, Manor right. Kent, I mean. no, Where my dad got the idea from. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Good Pray for us, Melvin, would you? Yeah, we do. Oh, Pray for you right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, we pray for Dale and his team. We pray for good results that will bless mm. your name and glorify you in every way. Yeah. And save those people that are struggling. That's and those people who don't even recognise their struggle. But one day the truth will come up. So we ask the Lord that you will open up their hearts to be receptive to this man's words, your words that you've given them. Yeah. And they'll all come to know you as your Lord and Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, brother. I'll be praying for you as well, sir. So Thank you. That's good. God bless you, Paul. That's all we are, friends, sinners, in the sight of a holy God. God is holy. God is thrice holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The Bible doesn't say that God is love, love, love. It doesn't say that God is merciful, merciful, merciful. It says that God is holy, holy, holy. Angels surround his throne, crying out to him, day and night, declaring his holiness. God is pure. Perfect in every possible way is a righteous God. In him there is no darkness at all. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. Your creator is such a wonderful being, holy, undefiled. It's not possible for God to sin. There's no sin in him. It's impossible for God to sin. God can't do some things. He can't sin. He can't lie. He can't be unfaithful like us. He can't change his mind we're often changing our mind aren't we we're often we're so fickle but the God of the Bible is immutable your creator never changes and what he said was a sin 6,000 years ago is still a sin today friends God never changes society change society they they change their mind as often as their socks don't they but the God of the Bible never changes is the same yesterday today and forever your creator the God that you know exists I'm not here to try and persuade you in my own strength to become a Christian I'm not here to try and dissuade you from your atheism friends if you're claiming to be an atheist today no based upon the Word of God who knows everything about everybody and everything about everything he says that there's no such thing as an atheist he says that the whole human race no God. Every human being part of the human race, there's only one race, isn't there? 
all made by the God of the Bible. And he made everybody with knowledge of himself. Humankind knows that God exists. No matter what comes out of their mouth. An atheist can kick and, kick and stamp his feet and tell you to his blue in the face that he doesn't know God exists, but the Bible says otherwise. And God knows everything, and the Bible's always right, and we're always wrong. If we contradict the Bible, right? <laughs> the Bible is God's word. The perfect God who knows everything about everything has given us his written word, and the Bible was put together over... 1,500 years, 15 centuries, written by 40 different authors, 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. The Bible was put together by God. All scripture is God-breathed. And the Bible is full as fulfilled prophecies, friends. Fulfilled prophecies. Accurate, detailed prophecy that's... Uh, come to pass. The, the next time the Bible gets something wrong will be the first time. So why aren't you reading your Bible, friends? It's the best book, the most sold book in the history of humanity. Why would you ignore the Bible? Why would you not read the Bible, God's Word, your Creator? The only Creator who exists, the God of the Bible, there's no other Creator. He made you. You are a privileged part of God's creation. I know the the topic at the convention this week is human. Well, the best thing about humankind is that we are made in the image and likeness of God. Unlike animals and angels, we are created in His image and likeness. Male and female, God made them. There's only two sexes. That's all they could ever be. I'm sorry if you're confused about that, but read your Bible. You needn't be confused anymore, friends. Male and female, God made them. God bless you. Why did God only make two sexes? Why didn't God create hundreds of genders? Have you ever wondered that? I mean, that's quite a, a topical discussion these days. Why didn't God create more than two genders? Well, the Bible answers that very question. Hello, my friend. The Bible tell, it says, well, Jesus said, he says, Have you not read, in the beginning God made them male and female. Male and female he made them. For this reason. Here's the reason, Keswick, why God only made male and female, and that's all they could ever be. For this reason, that a man would leave his mother and father, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's God's definition of marriage right there, Keswick. God is, hasn't left us in the dark about these things. So any other definition of a marriage, a man and a man, a woman and a woman, it's a mirage. God has already defined marriage and told us what it is. It's between a man and a woman. Do you believe that, my friend? <laughs> God's ways are always best. His ways are perfect. When we pervert God's ways, it's always a disaster. If we stick to what God says, we'll be on safe ground. Male and female, God made them. It's so sad seeing our young people today that posting on Twitter and Facebook. They've got pronouns, a list of pronouns as long as you're arm. But there's only male and female, that's all they can ever be. You don't have to be confused about your sexuality any longer. Male and female, God made them, the Bible says. And I guess the Christians that are here at the convention, they should know that. And they will be able to explain that to you further. I'm not alone in, my, in that belief. I'm not an extremist. That's basic biology. Male and female, God made them, friends. God always, do, he does all things well. That's what the Bible says. He does all things well and he never makes a mistake. And he always does what he says. When God told Adam not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when well, God said, don't eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you'll surely die. And they went ahead and did what God says they shouldn't do. They rebelled. One rebellious act against God. Death came into the world through one man's sin, Adam, didn't it? There wasn't any death before Adam sinned. So there couldn't have been a process of evolution. Could there? Before Adam sinned, nothing died. Everything was very good. There was no death. Before Adam, the man, sinned, when he listened to his wife and let his wife lead the, lead the relationship, that was Adam's sin. 
when God did that, when God said to them, when you eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you'll sure, you surely die. And they did die spiritually, didn't they? They were separated, cast out from God's presence over one sin. Only one sin, friends. That's how holy God is. One sin is enough to cast you out of his presence forever. See, we make light of our sin, don't we? And if you have a low view of God, if you don't see him in his glory, in his holiness, in his splendor, if you don't see how wonderful he is and majestic in his holiness, you don't see him as the glorious creator of everything and the sovereign ruler of everything, if you don't see him high and lofty, you have a low view of God, you have a low view of sin. And that's the problem today with society, isn't it? They've gone away from God's commands. They're doing what's right in their own eyes. They're calling evil good and good evil. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. They're calling evil good and good evil. Think about what society is doing today. Abortions on demand. Murdering little babies in the womb, created in the image and likeness of God. Do you realize, ladies, that life begins at conception? I know they've stopped teaching that in schools, but the little baby's heartbeat heartbeats at six weeks six weeks in the mother's womb that baby's heart begins to beat and we've got abortion on demand and the churches are remaining silent about it by and large that's wicked they're calling evil good and good evil calling it choice right under our noses folks they're saying a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman Perverting marriage. Some of the church is even allowing same-sex marriages today, aren't they? That's evil. They're calling evil good. And it can never be good. Marriage is only between a man and a woman. That's all it can ever be. And any sexual relationship outside of a man and a woman in a marriage is called sin. Sin. Let's call it what it is, folks. I know we live in 2023, but as far as I can see, that doesn't mean that we've moved on. It means that we've degenerated. We've gone sunken deeper and deeper into sin. I mean, we've only, it's only very recently we started having uh, Drag Queen Story Hour. Have you heard about it? Drag Queen Story Hour. Teaching little babies. A man dressed up as a woman and doing abominable things in front of little children, corrupting their their mind, their impressionable minds. Why are you shaking your head at that point? Do you agree with Drag Queen Story Hour, my friend? Do you agree with that? It's filthy. It's vile, my friends. The God of the Bible in no way approves of that. He says, if you corrupt a little child's mind, it'd be better if a millstone, if you were tied to a millstone and thrown into the, the deepest ocean, my friends. It's not clever to corrupt children's minds. It's not wise. And that's where we're at. We're calling evil good and good evil in this nation. This nation isn't in a good place. So little wonder, little wonder we've got a government that's uh, well, corrupt. Go what do you say about our corrupt government, man? They're, they're full of liars. They're lying. Every time a politician's lips move, he's lying. We've got a bunch of liars in government. Stirring the pot. With, the Russia, with Russia in the war, threatening us with more viruses and more, more lockdowns, a financial crisis. Little wonder. You see, you can't expect... Hello, my friend. You're right. You can't live in a safe, comfortable, blessed nation when we're flying in the face of God like that. This nation needs to repent. This nation needs to get to its knees and cry out to God, call upon him while he's near. Yeah, that's you. You're part of this nation. Have you called out to God? Call upon him while he's near. Today, if you hear God's voice, don't harden your hearts, friends. This nation needs God. We don't need another political party. Another political party isn't going to save this nation. We need God. We need him to move on our nation converting people and that's the point you see I wish I could save anybody if I could save anybody everybody up and down this street in Keswick would be a Christian on their way to heaven but I don't have that kind of power all I can do is point you 
to the source of power. All I can do is point you to the cross, friends, where your hope is found. There is hope. You see, this world looks like it's falling apart. It's actually falling into place, friends. The God of the Bible, the God of the Bible who created everybody and everything, is not up in heaven with his head in his hands at the mess we've made of things. The God of the Bible is sovereign. And this, this nation is exactly where God has decreed it to be. And we need to repent so that we call upon him. God's always done that. When his people have forsook him, he brings them to a bad place so that they come to their knees and look to him. And that's what we need to do. You and I individually cry out to God that he would save our nation. That in his wrath, in his displeasure, he would remember mercy. God is a merciful God. But one day his mercy is going to end. One day his mercy is going to come to an abrupt end. And all that will be left is judgment. All that will be left is wrath. And so you don't want to stand before an angry God when you die. God is angry. Contrary to popular opinion, God is angry. Is your God angry? The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every single day, friends. The God of the Bible is not looking away and, uh, at humanity's sin, look, turning the other, the blind eye. The God, the God of the Bible is holy. Don't you get it? It's pure. And without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And so the God of the Bible isn't up in heaven, waving a rainbow flag, celebrating diversity and inclusivism. The God of the Bible isn't a feminist. He's holy. The God of the Bible is holy. And the only way that we can stand in His presence, the only way that we can be allowed into heaven when we die, is if we look to that cross. You see, 2,000 years ago, God himself, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, God is one being, three persons in one being, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Son of God entered creation. He was born of a virgin, a miracle birth. Angels announced his appearing, wonderful signs and wonders, pointing to the birth of Jesus Christ. That monumental event when God put on flesh. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what God's Word says. The God of the Bible came to this dark world full of sin, this sin-sick world, this world that loves its sin and hates the God who created them. The God of the Bible put on flesh. He was born of a virgin. He humbled himself, became lower than the angels, and he lived a sinless life. He lived a sinless, can you imagine living a sinless life? All we've ever done is sin. All we've ever done is sin from birth, right? Because we're sin-loving creatures, the Bible says. We're not good people. But can you imagine the Son of God living a sinless life? A perfect life in thought, word, and his, his actions in secret. All your actions in secret, God's seen them. Everything you do in the dark will be brought into the light one day, friends. God is not looking the other way, ignoring your sin. He's holy. His eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. There's nothing hidden from his eyes, friends. And that's why it's such a terrifying thing for us to stand before him. If you are to stand before God in your sin, it won't be a happy ending. It won't be a comfortable experience, friends be the worst possible outcome for any image bearer of God. You say, oh, you're just trying to frighten people. Yes, you're correct. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise, hello my friend, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Are you going to remain a fool? Are you going to fear God and depart from evil? The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. It's wise to fear the God of the Bible, that holy Righteous, just God who sees men's thoughts. God sees your thought life. He knows what you are in truth. You can pretend to be something you are not in front of people. What you are in front of people is what men think you are. What you are alone at home in secret when there's no one else there is what God knows you are, friends. He knows it all. He has 
limitless knowledge. He has infinite knowledge. He knows everything there is to know about everything. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. 